Fort George Amusement Park was an old trolley park and amusement park that operated in the Washington Heights and Inwood neighborhoods of Upper Manhattan, New York City. Nice. In the late 19th and early 20th, early 20th centuries. Paradise Park soon became disliked by residents due to its high crime and constant noise pollution. And formerly genteel amusement park was no longer considered safe for the working class. Local residents, led by neighborhood activist Reginald Pelham Bolton, started asking for the closure of the park in 1910, citing these nu nuisances. It was an amusement park that started getting riffraff. A and trolley park falling on disrepair like so many port sides and Coney Islands of the world. Paradise Park was partially burned down in an arson in 1911. Long story short, a lot of people were opposed to rebuilding the park after it burned down several times. The remainder of Fort George Playground became the site of George Washington High School. No evidence remains of the amusement park at that site, but Carousel Number 15 was later brought to Palisade Center Shopping Mall in West Nyack, New York. So Fort George Amusement Park became George Washington High School. And Herbert Boutros Carey, also known professionally as Tiny Tim. <gasps> Nice. Was, was an American singer, nice. ukulele player, and music archivist. Nice. He's best remembered for his cover hits. Which he sang in that awful falsetto voice. He was born in Manhattan. On April 12, 1932, Tiny nice. Tim displayed a musical talent at a very young age. At the age of five, his father gave him a vintage wind-up gramophone and a 78 record of Beautiful Ohio by Henry Byrd. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he was fucked up. Everything from that time period sounds creepy as shit, yo. Yes, it does. So, and you can picture Tiny Tim as a weird, creepy kid. He would sit for hours listening to that record. That would, yeah. And by his preteen years, he developed a passion for records, specifically those from the 1900s through the 30s, and began spending most of his free time at the New York Public Library alone, reading about the history of the phonograph industry and its first recording artists. As someone who spent a lot of time at a public library or public libraries alone, that'll, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. He researched sheet music, often making photographic copies to take home to learn, a hobby he continued for his entire life. And then he attended George Washington High School in Washington Heights, Manhattan. Oh my God, that... I feel so bad for... I feel, as an Ohioan, I feel kind of responsible for Tiny Tim. Because, I, I mean, so, I enjoyed that. I, I enjoyed it because it sounded creepy. And that's why I enjoy Tiny Tim. It's because he is kind of weird and creepy. The California Institute of the Arts. Cal Arts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was a private university. It is a private university in Santa Clarita, California. It was incorporated in 1961 as the first degree-granting institution of higher learning in the U.S., created specifically for students of both the visual and performing arts. Nice. Basically, it's an art school, right? It's the uh, art school, it sounds like. It was first envisioned by many back benefactors in the early 60s, staffed by a diverse array of professionals, including Walt Disney. Nice. So Cal Art students develop their own work over which they retain control and copyright in a workshop atmosphere. When it was formed in 1961 as a merger of the Schoenard, Schoenard Art Institute. Have you ever done that? This thing where you just get on YouTube and you type in the word pronounce? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I. I uh... And then anything. I mean, it's almost anything. Yeah. No, I thought it would be funny for our home channel to have a function, something like that. That you'd put in a word, you'd get a response with one of us pronouncing it like a moron. Pronounce names.com. Schwinar. Schwinar. No, it's French, dude. Schwinar. Schwinar. 
Yeah. Swina. Yeah. Swina. Not Swina. It's not Swan. I don't know. That's how she said it. Swina. Swina. Go on. So it was a merger of the Swina Art Institute and the Los Angeles Conservatory of Music. So you know how sometimes on Google, when you look something up, it'll automatically include frequently asked questions? Yes. Or frequently Googled questions? Indeed. So one of the top things on Cal Arts was, why is Cal Arts bad? <laughs> I find that these Google searches, when they have a negative connotation, I can't stop. I always have to look. Yeah, why? Why? Why is it? Is it so I looked up liberal? I looked up why they. That's what I was expecting them to say. Yeah. But why is CalArts bad? And the answer was one of the main criticisms of the CalArts style is that it shows laziness from cartoon creators. In addition, many complain that the style is too simplistic and brings less diversity to to design and animation. Oh. So apparently, all the people that graduated from there are lazy. Well, no, they just lazy asses. They, animation is hard, so it simplifies everything. It's the difference between the early two thousands re release of of Thundercats from a French okay. anime studio and fucking okay. Dexter's Lab or Powerpuff Girls. Simplify. Okay. Simplify. You know? So you're good with that. You I, it's you a understand style. this. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a style. style. I, and a, you accept it. You accept it as a style. You don't think it's lazy. I don't think it's lazy. I think it's a style. I, I understand why it's called lazy, but I think it's a style. Is is we wouldn't have the. Have you ever been called lazy? <laughs> yeah, of course I have. Come on, man. You think? I spent so much time in a robe before this plague. <laughs> you're you're a grown man wearing a robe. You're, you're making a, a YouTube channel in a robe. I, my, and you're goal, not wearing... my goal is comfort, dude. That's why I wear a kilt. <laughs> Just because it's comfortable. <laughs> and the bonus of wearing a kilt, besides the fact that it's comfortable, it pisses people off. <laughs> like old women get pissed off at me for wearing a kilt, and that's a bonus for you. And I think it's bonus. hilarious because they're in pants, and they're <laughs> calling me a girl or gay because I'm in a skirt, and I'm like, "You're in pants," and they're like, "It's different." I'm like, "No, it's not. It's not different at all." <laughs>